So you know, some quadratic equations are so easy, we've got to love them. Look at this one here. x squared equals 4. This is so simple because since, in fact, this is a perfect square, all I've got to do is just take the square root of both sides and remember to include a plus or minus since a quadratic always has two solutions. And so this is so easy. I love it because all I can immediately say is x equals plus or minus the square root of 4. Or in this case, I'd see that x equals plus or minus 2. So simple. Well, here's the really cool thing. It turns out that every quadratic equation is actually this simple, but in disguise. And that's where the great power of what's called completing the square comes from. So let me actually try to show this to you in some examples. Let's take a look at some equations that actually aren't that difficult. They're just traveling incognito, as they say in the spy world. So here we go. Here's a quadratic equation. Let's solve it. What I'm going to do first is say, hey, you know what? I don't see any x's here. I'm not going to worry about factoring. Let's just be crazy. Let's just be a little bit nuts and bring the 1 over to the other side. We're going to subtract 1 from both sides. And what do I see? I see 3x squared would equal 150. If I divide both sides by 3, this reduces to x squared equals 50. And now I'm kind of back to the easy one. I could just take plus or minus. Never forget the plus or minus. Plus or minus the square root of both sides. And I'd see x equals plus or minus the square root of 50. And of course, you can simplify that a little bit and write that as plus or minus 5 times the square root of 2. And so remember, this means there's two answers, a 5 square root of 2 and minus 5 square root of 2. OK, so again, we took sort of a complicated looking equation and saw that it was actually a perfect square type equation in disguise, in disguise. How about this one? Well, this looks really, really complicated. And again, the natural inclination, if you feel this way, this is good, 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 is to bring everything over, have it equal 0, and solve it. But just let's be a little bit, let's go a little wild, a little bit wild, and notice that without touching it, the left-hand side can be factored. So this is a little bit crazy, a little unconventional, but if we factor the left-hand side, let's see what happens. Well, I'll put an x here and an x here, two numbers whose product is going to be 16. Let's try 4 and 4. They both have to be plus. Does this work? x times x is x squared. Outside is 4x. Inside is 4x. That's 8x. 4 times 4 is 16. This actually works. This is actually a perfect square in disguise. So I can write it this way. And now, again, I can take plus or minus square root of both sides. And what do I see? On this side, I see x plus 4 equals plus or minus the square root of 12, which is 2 square root of 3. And then I just bring the 4 over by subtracting 4, and I see that x equals negative 4 plus or minus 2 square root of 3. The answer is getting a little more complicated, but you see that this was actually a perfect square hidden in disguise. Now, let's just think about this and notice that, again, there are two answers here. Let me make sure we see both of them. One is negative 4 plus 2 times square root of 3. And the other one is negative 4 minus 2 times square root of 3. So if we can write the thing as a perfect square, then just taking plus or minus square roots of both sides allows us to solve it. The surprise is that we can write any awful quadratic as a perfect square. Stay tuned.